guys. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've been really excited because a lot of y'all have been commenting now and leaving comments. And uh, actually, I even kind of feel like I've made a few friends now from some of the comments. I hear from some of y'all repeatedly, and I want to thank y'all because not only do I think it leads to a better channel, but it also gives people different perspectives outside of mine too and, and actually informs me about certain things that I didn't even know about the products that I own myself. So uh, to all of y'all, and y'all know who you are, thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel. It's really, really, really appreciated. Um, hope everyone's safe and doing well. Uh, today's video is going to be a pros and cons video, which just a reminder to those who might be watching one of our videos for the first time, our pros and cons videos are completely subjective. We like to admit at the very beginning that, you know, we don't, we don't know everything about everything. Um, so it's really just our preferences and some of the things that y'all might hear that we're not so fond of, uh, y'all might be extremely fond of. So we don't mean to disrespect anyone in any shape or form. Um, as some of the others have been doing, feel free to leave us comments, something that we can address later on. Uh, perhaps we feel a certain way about something because we're misusing it, for example. So uh, keep us posted, guys. Again, uh, we really like reading y'all's comments. Um, Today's light is going to be the X-T12S by Claris. I have my bag on the table for a reason. For those of you who may have seen the pros and cons video, I think it was the pros and cons video, on the X-T2CR, um, I did the same thing. And the reason for that is because I went ahead and I plugged up the sheath, I attached it to the Molly inside my, my front compartment here. And this used to be the spot of the X-T2CR, but it now keeps my X-T12S because after keeping up with some of y'all's comments and trying different configurations myself with the X-T2CR, uh, I am EDCing that light now. So a big shout out to you guys again, because if it wasn't for y'all's comments, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be EDCing that light. But I have been EDCing that light, and I've been very happy EDCing that light. And this has taken my place as a primary bag light for me now. Um, one important thing to note while I remember, uh, the sheath that the X-T12S comes with. On the other side here, I actually have the sheath for the X-T2CR. I figured they would be the same, although the head sizes are different, but they're not. Okay, guys, so they do come with specific built sheaths for both lights. The X-T12S light will not fit in an X-T2CR sheath. So I'm gonna get this bag out of the way. Um, to anyone new to the channel and anyone who's seen some of our videos before, I also want to remind you all that I only buy lights. I, I pay with my own money for whatever lights or gear that I have. Um, and therefore, I only buy lights that I myself am actually interested in. So in my subjective videos, you are far more likely to hear a lot, of, a lot more pros than cons because I like to do some homework on a light before I actually buy it. Um, and if I thought there were a lot of cons uh, or that the cons outweighed the pros, I wouldn't be buying the light in the first place. Uh, so if y'all feel like at any point in time with my lights, like this Claris tonight, that I'm just full of high praise for it, uh, in many ways, in most ways I am, and that's why I purchased the light in the first place. Uh, but just going into it, um, the size I think is fantastic and it's a very well balanced light. That is definitely a pro of this one. Sometimes when you get into lights like this, especially with the magnetic charging up front, it adds a lot of girth and a lot of weight to the front of the light. Uh, in this particular case, I think it works in this light's benefit, especially from a tactical perspective. If you were to use it as a weapon, it actually gives me a lot better grip on the light. It makes me feel like I'm kind of throwing a hammer down um, versus a, uh, a pencil like you would on some of the fully tubular style 18650 ser uh, series lights. Um, as with most other Claris lights, at least those in this class, I absolutely have fallen in love with the dual tail cap switch system of the Claris lights. I find them to be extremely intuitive. And uh, you, I mean, even if you've never used a light before, guys, it just, it just works. It just works. And it makes sense. Um, these, I love the fact that you can swap modes on this particular light as well, you can go from an outdoor mode, which means you change the functionality of the secondary tail cap switch here. Um, you can either change it from being your immediate access to low mode or to high intensity strobe. On my XT2CR, because of y'all's comments again, and I thank y'all for those, I switched the, the mode on that one so that now my secondary switch is my low mode. And, uh, and I have, of course, the instant high from the primary tail cap switch. On this particular light, uh, I have kept the secondary switch to be the high intensity strobe, and I have kept the primary switch to be just the high on. So this guy's on high pretty much all the time, really all the time. Um, the pocket clip, 
you know, I'm not a tremendous fan per se of how low it sits on the body of the light. I really like to have a higher rise pocket clip in most cases, but I'm gonna tell you guys again, uh, this works with the Claris because on this light and on the X-T2 CR, and these are the first two Claris lights I've ever owned, the retention is amazing on these clips. I've had O lights, I've had Phoenixes, I've had Nikors, I still have those lights, I still like a lot of those lights, some of my favorite of all time. But I can tell you, I, I think that just talking tension here of a pocket clip, I think Claris wins bar none. Um, something else about this light that I really want to tell people, I think Claris wins immediately over many, um, over all of the brands I've tested and known so far, but uh, over many that I haven't, I would presume, is the crenellated bezel. Uh, one big reason why I purchased the M1X Striker is because I loved just how crenellated that bezel was. Um, I thought it was going to be extremely aggressive, and it was. But I don't know what Claris does to these low ride strike bezels, these crenellated bezels, but if you put them in the palm of your hand and you twist them, it hurts. I mean, even without putting a lot of pressure in it, it's the same exact thing with the X-T2 CR. Uh, it's, it's just as high as this one is, or just as low rather, and it's extremely aggressive, guys. I mean, this thing is truly a weapon. It's, it's really, really, really awesome. Um, I love the fact that this particular light comes standard again with Claris's 3600 milliamp rechargeable battery, guys. Uh, you know these cells are expensive for those of you guys who, who keep up with lights. So to include one, and for the light, I think the MRSP of this light's, I know it's under $100, but I, th I think it's under $90. Might even be under $80, depending on where you get it. Um, but the fact that it comes with a 3600 milliamp battery is just phenomenal. I mean, it, that's enough reason in itself to buy this light, in my opinion. Um, Cool about this Claris as well. One thing I really like, you've got a little uh, uh, kind of like a camera stand. I forget what it's called. Sorry, guys, I'm having a brain fart right now. But you can plug this up to a tripod, basically. It will twist right onto one. So if you're into filming or anything like that, this light definitely produces enough output um, to help out with cameras for sure. That's one thing I really like. I like where the indicator on this light is especially when it comes to charging and not charging, or even every time you press the power button, for example, it will light up to let you know just how much juice you have left in three different stages, just like a traffic light. I find that to be very useful. I had an Army Tech light, um, I believe it was the C2, the Partner C2, and I really liked that light, but the biggest problem I had with it was actually where it showed the charge indicator. Uh, it constantly flashed, and it was extremely bright every time it flashed, which I found to be a nuisance. Um, I found so far on both my Claris lights, and they are different with their charging methods, but just how dull the LED indicator is on the light, it's not intrusive with anything else, and it's right there, so you know with absolute certainty how much juice you have roughly in the light, and I think that's really a positive thing. Um, talking about the LED indicator, obviously it surrounds the magnetic charging. Uh, I pulled the uh, charger out. You don't have to use this, guys to charge the cell. Obviously you can pull it out like any other light and plug it into a standalone charger if you want to. Um, but I find this to be awesome, honestly. I mean, maybe I'm just getting lazy as I'm getting older, but I mean, it's got a super positive lockup. And I'll tell you guys, for any of you guys who actually recharge y'all cells, especially 18650s on something, like I have an old school Nightcore i4 charger and it takes, it takes hours to charge a cell up. I haven't noticed any significant difference at all in the amount of charge time. And it is really convenient to be able to plug this in to my car uh, and as I'm driving, just have this sitting up like this. I mean, just already plugged in and recharging and juicing up and staying juiced. I love that about the light. Um, all in all, I, I really, I don't have too many cons outside of the cons that I usually have on lights. It's pretty apparent to me. One of those cons would definitely be the knurling on the light. I think that it looks really cool. But uh, unless you guys have held something like an Ace Beam EC35, I really prefer a, and I don't, I don't know what I'd call it. I'm going to call it a tacky texture, something that really adds grip. Um, a lot of guys, my younger brother included, we like to use our lights even for working on cars. Sometimes we get oil and antifreeze and slippery substances on our hands. It's nice to have a firm, solid purchase on something. Uh, if you're going to wear gloves for something like this, especially in a tactical uh, situation, of course, it's probably not going to matter much to y'all. But um, if I had oil on my hand right now, I don't think this knurling is going to do much at all in terms of keeping the grip on this light for me. Um, something else I've noticed that's, I'm not sure if it's a con or what it might be, and I've noticed this on my X-T2 CR as well, so keep your eye out for this, guys. 
Um, there have been a few times when I've activated the light in high mode and I've noticed an immediate step down. So I haven't tested the lux or anything of the light to see just how low it's going, but um, you know, or how much of a step down it is, or maybe it's just turning on instantly at a, at a brightness even greater than the registered 1600, so it's stepping down to the 1600. Uh, even when it steps down, it's still a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beam. Um, but I have noticed that, so keep your eyes out for that as well. And uh, my last pro of this light, guys, is that it's something that can fit in your pocket. Even though the head's a bit bigger, a bit wider than the X-T2 CR, if you really need something with more throw, and I mean a legitimate 300 meter light, uh, this, this one will do the job, honestly. It will really do the job. It is an awesome light. Hopefully it stays in my collection indefinitely. Uh, I hope you guys have liked this video. Please feel free to comment on any of the stuff that I've said. Uh, for some of you guys who have commented on multiple videos, feel free to comment and just say hey, because we enjoy hearing from y'all. Uh, we'll talk to y'all soon. Stay safe. God bless.